Please rise for our opening hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, number 377. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome here to St. Paul's Lutheran Church on this third Sunday of Easter. I love that. Give God the glory. Hallelujah, right? And especially on a more beautiful morning um, like today. Every time I drive over here, it just gets brighter and brighter each morning. So I am grateful. I think I saw a little meme on Facebook, too, talking about the, um, about the sunset in the evening, too. They were like, we made it, right? So the days are getting longer. They continue to get longer. Uh, this morning in opening announcements, I'd just like to express again our sympathies to the family of Dave Call. His funeral was held here yesterday, and just thank you to all the hands, right, that it took to, um, to provide a space for our community to grieve and mourn Dave's sudden death. Um, and it just was a wonderful celebration of his life, and I think this plant here was left um, in honor and memory of Dave. So please keep their family they, in your thoughts and prayers. They were so grateful um, of our accompaniment of them in, during last week, and hopefully in the days and weeks ahead too. Um, and then this morning, a congratulations to Sheldon. He's here. He's a grandpa this morning. So um, all, yay. <laughs> 
The gift of new life is amazing. Uh, Olive was born yesterday, I believe. Um, she was eight pounds, 11 ounces, and 19 and a half inches tall. So congratulations to you, Sheldon, and to the parents. I believe that's all I have for opening announcements. I'll save a whole bunch for the end. So let us begin with our Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. People of God, in the baptismal waters we traveled with Christ from death to life. Our past, our sin, our failure, our doubt, and our shame are drowned and gone here. You, O oh God, wash us clean. Our fear, our confusion, our self-righteousness, our despair, all are washed away by grace. You, O oh God, wash us clean. Our pride, our hypocrisy, and other people's opinions of us no longer have the power to define us. You, O oh God, give us new life. The Spirit lives and moves through us now, a great and joyful mystery, so we may bring love and mercy into the world as the body of Christ. You, O oh God, give us new life. Rejoice that God has claimed us in this baptismal grace, not by our doing or believing, but by God's mercy alone. You, O oh God, give us new life. And so as we begin worship, we give thanks to God for the gracious gift of baptism that joins us together in Christ by the Spirit's power. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God, God's mercy and forgiveness. We praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. To you be honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Please join with me in our prayer of the day. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts 3, verses 12 to 19. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us as though by our own power or pity we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servants, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him, but you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have him murdered, given to you. You killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. By faith of his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, and did also your rulers. In this way God fulfilled what he had foretold in the future on all prophets that Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we're listening to a psalm, Psalm 4. Answer when I call, O God, fender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me, and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that Lord does wonder for the faithful. Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. 
speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in your heart, more than when green and wine abound. In peace I will lay down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The second reading is First John uh, verse 3 through 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that he did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, that we will have be his not yet be revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. All have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of the lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins. In him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has, has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does that what is right in righteousness just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke in the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, you are my witnesses of all these things. The gospel of our Lord, we say, praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So our resurrection accounts, they continue this morning. Easter has arrived, but we continue to hear these stories of Jesus' appearance to his disciples and to the women at the tomb. We'll continue our journey through this time. We'll, these stories will continue during these next, well, we started with 50 days, but now we're down to just a couple more weeks before Pentecost arrives. We continue to be reminded over and over what it means to belong what it means for or where our place is in God's family and what that looks like and what Jesus asks of all of us over especially today and through the next couple of weeks, we will continue to hear we are called 
to be witnesses to all of these events, just like all the generations that came before us. And remember, as we continue our journey through this Eastertide, we're being encouraged also to build community, which will strengthen us for the seasons ahead. And we can't do this life of faith, we don't do it by ourselves, right? We do it in community with one another. When we fall down, others pick us up. And when others fall down, we are there to pick them up and encourage them in their faith. We can rely on one another to walk with each other just like we can rely on Jesus to show up when we need him the most. These past couple of weeks for our Easter sermon, we heard from the Gospel of Mark. Last week, we heard from the Gospel of John. And this week, we get to hear from the Gospel of Luke. It's kind of a rare colliding of different voices of the Gospel writers. But there's this common theme that runs through each of these stories, right? The women at the tomb, we left, Mark ended with them fleeing from the tomb. They were terrified. Who did they tell the, this story to? No one, right? But they eventually did because that's why we're all here. The second week, last week, we heard that the disciples, they locked themselves behind closed doors, right? They were afraid of what had just happened. What does this mean? And then we heard the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples and also to Thomas, who said, yeah, I don't know if you guys know what you're talking about, right? I want to see it for myself. But yet, Thomas encourages us to ask for what we need, right? Continue to call out to Jesus. Now this week, the disciples have returned to where it all began, right? We find them on this lake shore. They're fishing. I wanted to find an image this morning so you could see Jesus, right? Jesus appears to them in flesh. They are offering him food, right? A ghost doesn't eat food. But Jesus says, touch my hands, just like he did to Thomas in that upper room when he was doubting. This morning, Jesus is there. He meets these disciples. Remember, I can't remember which week I talked about it now, but, um, oh, it was last week, right? Because in our, our Easter gospel, Jesus said, find me. You'll find me in Galilee. Return to where it all began in this morning. Hear these fishermen that Jesus had called to this life. This is where he meets them, on the lakeshore, they are fishing. They have returned to what they know. The disciples, they told their story of what had happened on this road. So right before our gospel lesson today, for the funeral yesterday, I used this gospel sermon. How many of you know the story, The Road to Emmaus? Those of you who were here for the funeral sir, or service certainly heard it yesterday. But Jesus' disciples are walking down this road on their way to the a village of Emmaus, right? And, and this man walks up beside them and says, what are you talking about? And it's, it's a funny story. There is humor in the Bible, right? Because as the reader, we know it's Jesus. But these two followers of Jesus, they said, well, we're talking about what has happened to Jesus, that he died, he was crucified, and and um, was buried, and now these women have come and told us that he has risen from the dead. And so the, he, they continue to tell Jesus this story, and he listens to them, and then he continues to tell them these stories and that it was the fulfillment of these scriptures. And then when they invite Jesus to break bread with them, it's in the breaking of the bread that they recognize who is sitting with them, right? And I said yesterday at the funeral that it's one of my favorite lines in all of Scripture. Were not our hearts burning within us, right? They knew that the presence of Jesus was with them. They were still talking. So in actually, the where are verses, um, sometimes I get mad at the lectionary because it doesn't always include all of the verses that we need. So if you'll see our gospel lesson today, it just begins, Jesus himself stood among the disciples. But they leave out a beginning part of that sentence. That sentence is, while they were talking about this, 
right? So they had heard this story of these two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and while they were telling him that Jesus stood before us in the breaking of the bread, this is when Jesus comes to meet these disciples on the lakeshore. And again, we've heard this repetitive over and over. When Jesus meets people, he says, peace, peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost, right? But he said, why are you so agitated? Why do these doubts rise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I. And he said this and he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was great, but they still couldn't believe it. That's what's so amazing about these Easter stories. We think on Easter Sunday, oh, everybody's got it all figured out, right? But these stories are of these disciples trying to make sense of what has happened. And what does this mean for the journey ahead? Then he told them, this is what I meant when I said I was, or when I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets, this is what was being fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. The word heart was used over and over in our gospel lesson today. And I had to ask Sherry because I couldn't find it in my sermons, but I know I talked about it a couple of weeks ago, how the Israelites, their meaning or their understanding of the heart, it wasn't like ours is today. We know we have a brain. They actually didn't have a word in Hebrew for brain, right? They thought everything originated from their heart, their whole being, what they felt, their emotions, and also what they thought. When Jesus is talking about their heart, he's talking about, I want you to be transformed. I want you to understand this story, and now I am giving it to you to make sure that you are witnesses to all these things that have taken place. In our world today, Many, many voices spread fear. It's easy to focus on these voices instead of on the voice of Jesus who continues to walk alongside us. But Jesus came to free us from fear, to free us for our faith, and to share that faith with one another. Holy Communion, which we will celebrate in just a little bit, it strengthens us to be witnesses to do his work in the world so that others can be set free by the good news of Jesus. Jesus connects his story as the suffering of the resurrected Messiah to these ancient scriptures and ties the church's story, his story, right? Helping the disciples to wrap their hearts and their minds around how God's past, how our present, and even the future to work together for our salvation and for a continued renewal as we live into the coming of the kingdom of God. This is the mission to which we are all called to witness to. We are God's witnesses to all that had taken place, even in our fear, even in our confusion, and even in the uncertainty of what is to happen next, right? We are called to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to all the ends of the earth. And I just wanted to mention one more thing. I have two things left that I wanted to say. In our Acts reading, if you'll go ahead, I want you to pull out your bulletin. And in our Acts reading, I'm trying to find where she has it now. Where's our second reading? Oh, Brenda corrected it. All right. Do you, see, do you see how verse 19, verse 19 is, Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins might be wiped out. Right? It sounds like it ends right there. But actually, verse 19, it says, Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins might be wiped out. Comma. There's a comma there. And then it starts a, a new verse. But it says, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration 
that God announced long ago through his holy prophets, right? It just doesn't end with the forgiveness of sins, which is why Jesus was sent to us and for us, but it's also about the renewal of our communities of faith. And this morning when I was driving over, I always put on some pop Christian music on my way over this morning, and there were some verses that came on, so I printed out the lyrics of this song. And I want you to remember the, this was the, the name of the song was, um, I got to get it right. I think it was Miracle Power. I don't know who the artist is, but it was called Miracle Power. But the first verses are this. This is for the lost. This is for the lonely, for the broken and afraid. This is for those who are hurting, hoping help is on the way. When fear is chasing after me, whatever trouble I am facing, when it feels like I won't make it. Sometimes it's hard being human. So much struggle, so much pain, but I call on Jesus. And these are the verses that stuck in my head. I may not know what a day might bring, right? We don't know what every day will bring, but we know who brings the day. On the darkest of night when I cannot see Still my soul will say, I believe in the miracle power. I am filled with the Holy Spirit working wonders in my heart. I may not know what a day might bring, but I know who brings the day. Amen? Amen. Go look that song up, Miracle Power. I'm sure there's a video on YouTube somewhere. Our hymn, is, our hymn of the day is All Who Hunger Gather Gladly, number 461. invite you to rise as we confess our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and that love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church and the world and all those in need of the good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have with generous hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm the storms that rage while at the same time providing your nourishing rains for the soil in our fields and to sustain life in all its variety. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom beyond all human knowledge. Guide all leaders and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice. We pray especially for the conflicts that continue around the globe and recent escalations. Inspire them to seek and offer your peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our healer, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition and guide those who journey in grief and hope and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in your ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember all our beloved who have died, especially David Call. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us now share the peace of Christ with one another this morning. God for your generous and ongoing gifts of all of our ministries here at St. Paul's. Please join with me in our offering prayer. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. This is the meal of all the baptized. All are welcome. You may be seated. Please rise. 
Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and to share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. And in closing announcements, it's another busy week um, coming up. Uh, Pastor Amy and I will begin our confirmation, we call them confirmation reviews, but they're confirmation conversations with the students as we have seven students who are preparing for confirmation, which will be held um, not next Sunday, but the following Sunday on April 28th. Um, St. Paul's has uh, one student, Eliza Woodman, and so we will be worshiping at St. Paul's on the 28th at 9 a.m. so that all the kids can be confirmed together. And then we will celebrate Eliza here at St. Paul's the following week, um, on the following Sunday. So uh, we have those coming up on Monday and Tuesday, and then I'll be at Buffalo Lake um, on Wednesday, Prairie View on Thursday, we have after-school activities here and confirmation mentor night. Whew, I'm going to be over here. <laughs> it's going to be a long week. Off to the races tomorrow morning. Um, but then also on Friday, please, if you know any 6th through 12th graders, any youth in our community, um, Mustang Ministry Youth Group will be meeting on Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. So please encourage them to go. The more there is, the stronger their community that they build. So, um, and Tom and Sarah are here, and thank you for all you're doing for that ministry. So I know the students are appreciating it. Um, and then, yay. Yay! Thank you. It is so important in our community to have a place for those kids to build community with one another. So thank you. Um, and next Sunday, uh, don't worry about supper, community supper at the Hector Community Center. So uh, please take a look um, at the St. Paul's or at the scoop. Um, there, Brenda always puts lots of good information in there. The last announcement, I want to make sure next week is, is Earth Day on Sunday? I can't remember. It's Earth Day coming up. And so, I, and so what we wanted to do is invite you to bring in either seeds or a bag of soil. It could be a cup, any kind of container that you want. And we're going to do a blessing of the soil and seeds for the growing season ahead. So please, next Sunday, little baggies work, uh, whatever containers you can find, grab some out of your pots, um, anything to remind us of God's goodness and God's God's grace that he gives us in all of our beautiful crops and flowers in the season ahead. So make sure and do that. All right, I think that's all that I have. So receive the Lord's blessing. Oh, and there's coffee downstairs, Mark told me and reminded me. So there's coffee downstairs for fellowship. Ooh, that's right, I forgot about that. I know that Brenda's working over there this morning. So the omelet breakfast over at the Methodist Church. So lots of ways to get lots of good treats this morning. Receive the Lord's blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. And our sending hymn is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. It's another jazzy one, Cindy. <laughs> so here we go. We'll sing the verse and then the refrain, verse, refrain, verse, refrain. And the refrain repeats, correct. Okay, here we go. <laughs> sing loud so everybody can hear.
are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.